Hi everyone, my name is Mr Barlow. Welcome to episode 38 of the VCE Biology Podcast. This episode covers part of Unit 4, Area of Study 2, and I'll be talking about the evolution of a species you may have heard of. Homo sapiens, that's right, us. So if you want to study the way that one particular species evolved, you have to be able to show the relationship between that species and other species. So basically, you need to be able to put the living world into order. And that's done by using biological classification. So all organisms that humans have discovered on Earth um, fit into a certain classification system, which is made up of seven main groupings. So the seven groupings are kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, and species. Now, I remember those seven groupings by using a mnemonic, and the mnemonic is kooky professors can offer funny great science. So kooky starts with a K, kingdom starts with a K, professors starts with a P, phylum starts with a P. So kooky professors can offer funny great science, (coughs) kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. Now, we're talking about um, us, humans. So humans are classified, their kingdom is animalia, so they're an animal. Their phylum is chordata, which basically means they've got a vertebra. Their class is mammalia, so that means we're a mammal. Their order is primates, we're a primate. Their family is hominidae. Their genus is homo, and then their species is homo sapiens. So we're a mammal, so one way that we differ from other organisms is that, um, and and all mammals, (coughs) all mammals have got hair, Uh, We've got three middle ear bones, and we've got memory glands, which are functional in mothers with young. But going into a more specific classification, we're also primates. So all primates have, you know, and and these are things like monkeys, uh, all primates have opposable thumbs. Uh, They've got good vision. All primates have got an ability to rotate the arm in the shoulder socket. Primates have got relatively large brains, and they've also got relatively long gestation periods. Primates are also social creatures. Uh, humans are also also belong to a classification group called hominins. So it's actually only at this level of classification that humans are separated from all the other great apes. So great apes are all primates, but we're the only hominins. And, and hominins are basically species um, which can walk erect on their hind legs. So we can do that. Uh, and our extinct relatives or close relatives could do that, but none of the other um, great apes can do that. So that's humans. We're um, animalia, chordata, mammalia, primates, hominidae, homo, and we are homo sapiens. So all life on Earth started around about 3.8 billion years ago. That's quite a long time. But what about us? Well, all of today's living primates diverged from a common ancestor, so one species, and that species lived around about 65 to 85 million years ago, so hardly very long at all. But we're really concerned about, you know, people who could walk upright, organisms that could walk upright, like us, and that's the hominin line. So the hominin line diverged from the African ape line probably around about only 6 or 7 million years ago. So that's really what we want to explore. We want to explore the evolution or, you know, of Homo sapiens, but we need to look at historical species who walked up upright. So that's bipedal locomotion. So we're not concerned about monkeys. We're concerned about hominins. And in fact, we're concerned mostly about hominin fossils. Now, it turns out that the oldest hominin fossils have all been found in Africa. So this provides really good evidence that hominins first appeared on the African continent. So that was when, you know, the hominin line diverged from the African ape line six or seven million years ago. Now, modern humans, so Homo sapiens, are actually all that remains of the hominin line. But there have been several different bipedal hominin species, or their fossils, which we've found. But the evolutionary path which led to modern humans involved several developments. For example, a change from living in trees, which is arboreal, to living on the ground, like we do, which is terrestrial. Um, It involved an increase in brain size, so we're pretty smart. Uh, It involved a decrease in the size of the jaws and teeth, 
we don't have very big jaws and teeth and involved a development of technology. Um, I'm just thinking about what I'm doing right now uh, and the development of language and culture. So all those things evolved or developed until we became the species Homo sapiens. So some of the earliest hominin species belonged to the genus Australopithecus. And these were small-brained, large-toothed primates who were able to walk erect, so they were bipedal. And there were two groups of Australopithe Australopithecus. So there were the graciles, for example, uh, Australopithecus afarensis, which was kind of more slender, and there were the robusts. So, for example, Australopithec Australopithecus robustus, and these were kind of more heavily built. Um, and there's lots of evidence, including the jaw and teeth structure, which suggests that the Graysal group was probably ancestral to the first Homo species. So the zygomatic arches, or basically the cheekbones, of the robust Australopithecines, uh, they had larger chewing muscles than the Graysal Australopithecines. Um, and this, as well as kind of different wear on the fossils of the teeth that we found, suggests that the grey cells ate plant food of a less fibrous nature than the robusts. But obviously that, that smaller zygomatic arches or the cheekbones of the grey cells, well, you know, with the genus Homo has, uh, you know, smaller cheekbones too. So it, that's kind of the evidence that suggests that the grey cells uh, evolved into the genus Homo. And so from observing fossils of australopiths, we've been able to deduce that they showed sexual dimorphism, which is basically um, the fact that females and males of the species looked different, so had observable differences. Uh, and the difference basically was that the female's mass was significantly lower than the male's. Um, because australopiths diet was mainly herbivorous, all of those species would have had relatively larger digestive tracts and to accommodate, accommodate those large guts, they had um, a very wide waist compared to the um, genus Homo or species of the genus Homo. So also by examining the fossils of other plants and animals found nearby Australopithecine fossils, we've been able to deduce that they probably lived in you know, forest or woodland habitats. Now there's also no evidence uh, that exists for tool making by Australopithecines, um, but there is limited evidence that exists that they used tools. So that's the Australopiths, and they were an ancestor of Homo sapiens. So Homo sapiens obviously belongs to the genus Homo, but the first species that existed um, of the genus Homo, they appeared at least 2.4 million years ago in Africa, and they had smaller teeth uh, again and bigger brains than the Australopiths. So the evolution of the genus Homo is actually also associated with the appearance of several behavioural changes. So fossil evidence, uh, evidence suggests that members of the genus Homo are made and used fire, they cared for the aged and ill members of the species, they buried the dead, they developed art, language and music, and they increasingly used technology. And, and by that, that means, you know, tools. So not, ne not necessarily uh, a computer, but they used their technology. So there have been several different species of Homo found, and I'll go through a few of those different species. So there was Homo habilis, and this was, you know, the first tool maker. So the earliest of the known Homo habilis fossils has been dated at around about 2.4 million years ago, so, you know, certainly one of the, if not the first Homo uh, species was Homo habilis, and they had discarded tools and broken animal bones around their fossil sites, which strongly suggests that the habilines, so Homo habilis, um, were the first hominins to uh, use tools, but also to include meat as a main dietary item. Um, another species of the genus Homo was Homo erectus, and these were the first human emigrants. So... Homo erectus probably evolved around about 2 million years ago, um, but then it became extinct around about 300,000 years ago. Um, so the, the oldest specimen of Homo erectus comes from Africa, in Kenya actually, but we've actually found Homo erectus fossils uh, in other continents around the globe. So this really illustrates that the species Homo erectus migrated out of Africa. Uh, the brain size of Homo erectus was around about 900 millilitres, so that's quite a bit more than Homo habilis. Um, so maybe this increased intelligence resulted in new behaviours. Um, 
more elaborate hunting, the ability to control fire more, make more elaborate tools, but also gave them the ability possibly to um, migrate out of Africa. Now, it's hard to tell where the fossil record of Homo erectus ends and that of Homo sapiens begins. And this difficulty occurs because fossils exist that are intermediate between the two species. So, but the intermediate form between Homo erectus and Homo sapiens, so those fossils are known as Homo heidelbergensis. Now, another species of the genus Homo is Homo neanderthalensis, or Neanderthal man. So Neanderthals had uh, <coughs> very large brains with an average brain size of about 1,400 milliliters. They were strongly built. Um, they existed in the fossil record in Europe and the Middle East over a period of about 150,000 to 35,000 years ago. So importantly, because Neanderthal people overlapped in time with modern humans, they can't possibly have been ancestors to modern humans. Now, of course, modern humans is the uh, species Homo sapiens, and fossil evidence shows that modern Homo sapiens existed in Africa from, from a, around about 130,000 years ago, possibly up to 200,000 years ago. So to sum up uh, the evolution of Homo sapiens, it began around about you know, 6 million years ago in Africa when the hominin line diverged from the Great Ape line. And then this hominin line, it didn't evolve in a, in a phyletic pattern of evolution, so that is um, basically one ancestral species changing to become the next in a very straight line. It was a branching or divergent evolutionary uh, pattern. So in fact, uh, at times, several different hominin species coexisted at the same time. But of the many hominin species that have existed in the past, you know, in Earth's history, only one species exists today, and that's our species, Homo sapiens. So if you look at the geographic distribution of Homo sapiens right now, you'll notice that we are spread all over the globe. So where did modern humans originate? Well, by studying both mitochondrial DNA as well as studies of the Y chromosome and other you know, DNA sequences, we've been able to deduce that humans originated in Africa. So mitochondrial DNA studies are particularly good uh, for evolutionary studies because mitochondrial DNA is highly conserved, so it doesn't mutate very much, um, and you only get it from your mother. So you got your mitochondrial DNA from your mother, who got it from her mother, who got it from her mother, who got it from her mother, and you can trace back history. So in fact, um, we talk about mitochondrial Eve. So that's kind of the, the woman who we say all living humans today descended from. And uh, that, you know, one of the first um, Homo sapiens species, it turns out, yeah, that she uh, originated in Africa. But to be specific, somewhere in East Africa, um, a good 130, possibly 200,000 years ago. So humans used to be nomadic, that is we moved around and we were hunters and gatherers. Um, but humans are now fairly sedentary so we stay still, we're permanent settlers and in fact it's been our ability to basically farm, grow crops and farm animals that's led to more efficient ways to produce food and it's enabled us to stop hunting uh, and stop gathering. So ever since mitochondrial Eve originated, you know, some 150, 200,000 years ago, we've been changing. So this is, you know, biological evolution in human populations has, has still been happening. So for example, um, the proportion of lactose intolerant adults in a population varies between different populations. And this is uh, dependent on whether or not that population used to um, consume fresh milk in its traditional diet. Um, another good example of the way you know we've changed or evolved over time is that uh, you can see uh, clinal gradua graduations in different populations. So humans living in hot, dry lands, for example, the Maasai of East Africa, have got a large. Their bodies have a large surface area. They're kind of tall and thin, and that compares uh, very differently to the Inuit of uh, Africa, so um, uh, Eskimos. Uh, they've, bas they've kind of got short, stouter bodies. So, and you can see around the globe that there are very, there are many very different um, human characteristics, I suppose, 
And that's all, all those changes have occurred since one small, very small population of humans, Homo sapiens, migrated out of Africa a very long time ago. We can also observe um, human cultural evolutions that have taken place. So um, this is you know, art, beliefs, institutions, um, the way people think, I suppose. So culture can certainly change and evolve over time. Uh, and in fact, it's evolving at, an, at a faster and faster rate due to our you know, technological evolution, which is also happening. So you know, one of the great things that made us human was we became bipedal. So we only used our feet and that freed up our hands and our brains got larger. So the, our, one, the fact that we became bipedal and freed up our hands and two, our better ability to think has meant that we've become great users of tools. So increasingly great. So we used to just use stone tools and then we figured out how to use metal tools. Um, and now we've really, you know, the technical, technological revolution has occurred. Um, so you can see that humans the, have used te technology and that has evolved too. Um, so in fact, you know, technology and tool making is, has always been an essentially human characteristic, which has distinguished us from other animals, just like, you know, what I'm doing now and, and what you're doing now. We're very technologically advanced through a technological evolution. And that thought very aptly brings episode 38 of the VCE Biology Podcast to a close. I'm Mr. Barlow, and thanks very much for listening.